Originally in English, May 2024. When a step down comes down to earth, it is said Matrix will need to create an explanation for him or her. Documents will appear, etc. And it's because they are separate realms. The one down here doesn't comprehend the outer one. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it does not. And this is because the matrix itself has found another energetic way to justify the existence. Okay, but the question is this. When you go to the Amazons, for example, where people live totally separate too, and many times have no greenest idea about what's happening in the civilized world, if the researcher goes there, who would be from the equivalent of the 5D world, the Amazon tribe matrix doesn't create anything there to explain that researcher. No stuff magically appears to accommodate him into the Amazon matrix. No memories will appear in that tribe member's minds to explain who he is. Why is that? It does happen as well. The natives create their own conclusions to who the researcher is and why he or she appeared there, always based on what they agree is their reality and how reality works. This was also seen when Christopher Columbus supposedly arrived to the New World and the natives couldn't make what a ship was, thinking that they were horrible sea monsters and they thought the Spaniards were incarnations of their gods. But that's still just mental, their own conclusions, but no equivalent of our documents there will appear. Or will it? I am referring to Matrix filling in the void itself, memories, photos, etc., whatever equivalent they have. It fills up voids in proportion and in the way it is needed depending on who is manifesting such matrix. The values and the ideas that give shape to manifestations. In their society, documents as such are irrelevant and do not exist, but in the equivalent of what they use, yes, that will appear, but it is only a manifestation of the personal and collective minds of the natives who are creating the reason for someone or something to exist. Same with the documents, papers, at a contemporary matrix level. The same thing happens looking upwards, in the opposite direction, not down towards the natives, but up to extraterrestrials, where UFOs are simply explained away as top-secret aircraft of swamp gas shining in the light of Venus, or cow farts shining in moonlight because the reason for something to exist is outside the understanding, the explanatory capacity and the level of conscious awareness of the ones who are manifesting that level of the or of a matrix. I understand, but that's still on the level of interpretation only, the UFOs explained away, etc. I am referring to that more precise numerical matrix generating circumstances like hard matter, photos, etc. equivalents to justify the existence of this person. Everything that exists is always that numerical matrix. Everything is numbers and math, including consciousness. But for example, if a researcher goes to the deep Amazon tribe, Will the bed with his engraving, where he supposedly slept in previous years, appear? And people's memories will change too, accordingly? Memories are not inside people. They are in the field of the collective unconscious. So yes, they will appear as, oh, I just remember that, yes, that happens. So the Amazon tribe will now have a memory of that researcher as who? 
what hard matter will be generated to justify his existence? Or it doesn't always have to be that way. They will only get or they can only read a memory that is in the field of collective unconscious that is according to their frequency and vibration. They must tune into that memory. So the natives, if isolated enough, cannot and will not read from the matrix, from the collective unconscious, the memory as such, this is Matt. He is a professor of sociology from Harvard University, and he is here to... Mm -mm. They hold nothing to understand that, and they will only interpret the existence of the researcher with the parameters of their own understanding. Ergo, they will think it is a god, or whatever. No matrix exists by itself. It is always the result of a personal and collective creation, as the result of complex agreements and perceptions and the interpretations and the attachments they hold to such interpretations. Okay, so that's what I mean. They will develop a false memory. Or how would the tribesmen accommodate the researcher? Matrix will implant the false memory according to their matrix. It's not false as such. It is only the reason for existence within one or another level of consciousness understanding and the matrix that generates manifests. A manifested idea, memory, and that happens all the time, but people are not aware of it. But it's a false manifested idea. It is from a more expanded point of view, but not from theirs. There is no absolute false and no absolute truth, as it adjusts to the level of conscious awareness of each subject. The past does not exist only as a memory, and memory is imperfect, and it depends on the field, on collective unconscious. So the matrix has no problem as it will only need the very weak energy to generate a memory. But it is still false for anyone who knows the real story. Yes, but that is an understanding above that matrix level. Okay. Also, extending this to another scenario, would the same happen out there among civilizations who are not interstellar? If you arrive there from Taigeta, to the unknown civilization who doesn't know of life outside their own, will the same apply? Their matrix will also fill in the void generating reasons, and I am not only referring to mental interpretations. Everything that exists and will ever exist is a mental interpretation. And yes, it would, and yes, it does happen the same way. But you know what I mean, hard matter like photos appearing proving that this or that person is this or that, or birth certificates, hard matter that explains that Senetre walking in Ireland is really a school professor in Dublin. There is no hard matter. That is just another illusion from the matrix. It is only an idea in a mind. A memory or a paper document or a name Senetre engraved in granite is all the same. They are only illusions and matrix manifestations. Any idea held for enough time will become an object. Basic law of mirrors. That's insane though, because this way, past not really existing and memories being ideas in the field, was I really in Italy then? How can we discern if anything happened at all then? How can you then trust even your own memory, Yaski? That's right. So you must decide what is real and what is not, depending on your level of awareness and what you are focusing on. And like it or not, Italy is only a memory for you now and in the minds of those who you are with. And a few tabs and plane tickets and some garbage you produced while you were there. And your memories? How can you truly know this or that happened then? It applies to mine as well, yes? 
then how can you say with certainty you remember the ancient clay wine bottles you were talking about earlier in your past life? I mean, you can say you remember it, but maybe not because you were there. Maybe you got it from the field because your mind had to justify something. Nothing is certain. I simply remember that when I am functioning at that specific level of awareness. I certainly did get it from the field, as always and as everyone else does. Yes, mind justifies something with the level of its understanding, never above it. And that justification is manifestation. But the fact you got it from the field may not mean it really happened for you. You were just a match, for whatever reason, to downloading that information as your memory. My mind was a frequency match to that memory, yes, that's why I got it. But did it happen? Does it matter to you at this point? Is the memory of it the only thing that matters? The question here is why I was a frequency match to that memory and not the professors of Roman archaeology who have not yet discovered the real reason behind the shape of ancient wine bottles. And doesn't matter, it only matters if you want, if you have a reason for it to matter. I see. Okay, and another question. When the Hashmalim go down, does the matrix fill in the void for them too, right away? Or only if someone looks for it? The matrix is pasty and dense. It takes some time. But even then, it does fill in the voids in the way I just described. For example, making all the people observing the hash and interpreting them as Norwegian tourists. That is another example of people manifesting reasons and realities at the level of their understanding. Because Norwegian tourist is a more credible reason to exist for the hush than a bunch of special forces Pleiadian men. This is where they would apply the infamous Ockham's razor, where that would be the simplest explanation. Norwegian tourists and not a team of Pleiadian Special Forces operators. Yes, although that's still more in the realm of pure interpretations. I'm talking about all histories and documents created for them and around them. Yes, that happens too sometimes, and only when looked for it. That is manifestation, because otherwise they will only ignore the presence of those hush assuming that there would be a logical explanation for their existence. But as they are down there for a short amount of time, it usually does not happen. It takes time and people, matrix people, researching. Yet it is also quite common that they find absolutely nothing. Because as I said above, at the beginning, the matrix can find other reasons for someone or for something to exist, and it all depends on the dynamics surrounding such existence. Okay, and captured Centauri pilots, what happened there then? Did the Matrix create the stories around them, including terrestrial documents of who they are? This question is from someone in the audience, about Hashmalim too, in fact. If captured by governments, then their level of understanding will include Pleiadian Special Forces operators to their reasons list, like what happened to the Centauri too. So you think in their case, Matrix didn't generate terrestrial documents? That's right, because they are, or they were, captured by those holding a higher level of understanding. Okay. And last question, Yaski, about this topic. Does any of this have anything to do with Mandela effect? Memories being different, matrix adapting, etc. It's also someone's question. It has everything to do with the Mandela effect, yes. But there are other reasons for it, like bad memory. But then again, 
memory is in the field, and something changed the field, therefore changed the memory. What is that something? The power of the collective unconscious and its very complicated dynamics. But then, you can also see different levels of understanding working with the Mandela effect, where two realities, two timelines, converge in the minds of those who remember differently. Why would the collective unconscious create two and more different memories in people, though? No, the, the people created it, those who remember differently because they held another frequency and another vibration to the one the matrix changed. Collective unconscious changed the matrix. It is the result of the sum and the average of the people, of the souls, who is generating the matrix, the collective unconscious, which is the same as what generates the matrix. So there are people who hold a higher or a different vibration, therefore remembering differently. But what does a memory have to do with the vibration? If two people of different vibrations go through the storm, they will both remember it as a storm. They will interpret it differently, but will remember the storm both. Oh yes, but if they went through that storm together, then they hold a similar enough vibration that keeps them in the same shared existential realm. Yet, no two people will remember that storm or any other event in the same exact way, as it will depend on their interpretation of reality and on what they manifest for themselves. So, people with different frequencies start to remember differently? What's the correlation frequency and memory? Frequency and vibration determine what memories you can tap into. And this connects to the Akashic Records as well, where, once more, frequency and vibration will determine what one person or another can access from that field. So if I can't remember anything, past life or whatever, or access much info from the field, Akashic Records or whatever, what does it speak of my frequency? Just saying, because a lot of people might think low of themselves at this point. Although it was explained already why we don't remember things here on Earth. And there are also soul agreements before birth. It does mean that your frequency and vibration does not permit you to access those memories. But the real question here is why? And the answer is because of a choice and because you are being held in an artificial frequency containment system which includes a human biological body designed to filter out everything that is not within the frequency range of 3D Earth and its matrix. And because you are in another machine that is designed to limit your vibration and force you to be compatible with the biological human body immersion machine. Okay. And above, you said that if two people went through that storm, it is because on some level they hold the same vibration, since they are sharing the realm. For you then, Yashi, to be seeing a dark entity, like in the astral, does it also mean that you are both holding similar enough vibration? Because you are both seeing each other, for example. You are sharing a realm. Yes, because a high vibration, like a hundred, for example, includes all the vibrations that form hundred. Those are one through ninety-nine and a hundred. So an entity at vibration 2 will be easily seen and detected by a being at vibration 3 or 100 even better. So you include that entity's vibration? Yes, but the entity at 2 does not include my vibration, as 100 includes 2, but 2 does not include 100. But the entity does see you, enough to get scared by you. I never fully understood that point. How can they see you? Oh wait, I think I remember. Because you let them see you? 
They cannot see me, only if I want to, and for a laugh. Okay, but another thing. So if we are of high frequency and they cannot detect a being of high frequency, why even worry about those dark entities? Mari and you say they influence us, but you also say those beings cannot even detect what's above them. Because they manage to influence you using tricks to get to your vibration. And most of those tricks are to lower your vibration to be more compatible with theirs. And mostly ignoring them and going your own merry way is also a good way for them not to get to you. But knowing they are there and how they work will only empower you. Ignorance is never empowering and it is never good. But if they cannot detect me, how do they even know I am there? I should be out of their range, in theory, hence of influence. Shouldn't we all? I know our frequency rotates though, so maybe they detect us by those low inverted peaks of our frequency? Yes, because they too have complex ways of knowing. And because people in the 3D matrix material world are not holding only one vibration, they are a soup of many. So those beings can see people in the world of the living, but not always, and not complete either. As people in the material world cannot see the whole entity either, only seeing them sometimes as ghosts and apparitions, half transparent and shady, out of focus. That's because the frequencies are not a complete match. So they can see some parts of you, and only when in a low vibratory state. That's also why frequency and vibration management is so important. I see. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Funny creatures, those astrals. Most are just more animals. Okay, so... Mandela effect, anything more to add on that? In short, I just explained it. What is missing is to explain the complexities of the collective unconscious. But, as you can imagine, that is quite overwhelming to explain. <laughs>